From the revolutionary genius minds of 1994's PS1 to the living room commanding uber gizmo that is the PS4, Sony have seen and done it all. You'll associate PlayStation with some of your finest childhood memories, the place where guys like Crash Bandicoot, Spyro and Croc all came to call home, and depending on what side you chose during the great console war of the 90s, it's a platform you'll defend come hell or high water if someone even attempted to say the likes of the N64 was any better. The PS2 remains the best-selling console of all time, something that Sony ended up nullifying when the horrendous price point for the PS3 came out. But luckily, Sony would regain their footing entirely with the mighty PS4 review. Guess that's a good thing. Just for fun here, give yourself a score of zero and add a point every time you already know one of the following facts. Then let us know in the comments how you got on. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com, and these are 12 mind-blowing things you didn't know about PlayStation. Are you ready? Let's do this. Number 12. Sony chairman Ken Kutaragi actually hated Crash Bandicoot. Even though he went on to completely define the edgy approach to marketing Sony deployed in staunch opposition to Nintendo and Sega, Crash's affiliation with Sony hardware almost didn't happen at all. CEO Ken Kutaragi reportedly despised the character and the first Crash game too, apparently going off on a tirade against a Naughty Dog rep to belittle the game's core design. The biggest problem was Kutaragi really wanted the PS1 to stand apart from anything remotely kid-friendly like Mario, although in the end, the majority vote won out and the orange marsupial made gaming history in every possible regard. Number 11, tons of old PlayStation cases had hidden demo discs. Remember the original cassette-like box design for PS1 games? Certain gamers found out that you could actually slide your fingers underneath where the disc was being housed and pop the black casing outwards, revealing in many cases another disc behind. It might sound crazy by today's standards, but plenty of publishers would include demos for their upcoming releases in with established titles or re-releases on the likes of the Platinum series. Just take a look, you might have a larger collection of games than you think. Number 10, Saddam Hussein once bought 4,000 PS2s to make a supercomputer. Okay, actually, he probably didn't. To this day, it remains something of an urban legend started by the now-defunct WorldNet Daily website. The story went that Saddam had thousands of PS2s shipped overseas in a bid to take over the world, using them to track missiles and flight paths, processing, and I quote, billions of polygons a second. Naturally, the world's ears pricked up for a while before reconciling that the idea of Hussein taking over life as we knew it with an army of PS2s was probably hogwash. Why? What are we gonna do tomorrow night? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world! Number 9. The US Air Force built a supercomputer with 1,760 PS3s. It seems Saddam's not the only one who was compiling supercomputers out of dormant Sony consoles. Instead, the US Air Force got in on the action, connecting 1,760 units into a gigantic processing powerhouse called the Condor Cluster. It was the 33rd largest supercomputer in the world of 2010, actually capable of processing billions of pixels a second, thereby being the fastest computer in the entire US Defense Department for that time. Number 8. The original PlayStation mascot wasn't Crash Bandicoot. Meet Polygon Man, the mascot for PlayStation. Not the most inviting figure, is he? Needless to say, although this design appeared in various promotional materials at the time, Sony head Ken Kudaragi reportedly hated the final look, electing to kill him off before any more damage could be done. Although Polygon Man did see a return to screens in 2013, where he was the final boss in PlayStation's All-Stars Battle Royale. Number 7. It was a couple of cats that sold PlayStation in Japan. Although the Western market got given Polygon Man and Crash, Japanese gamers had much of their original PlayStation-focused advertising centered on a couple of cats. Named Tomo and Kuro, they fronted Japanese-only game Doko Demo Iso before taking off in a huge way. Essentially, they were to Japan where Crash was to the West. Toro later went on to star in many commercials, also joining the roster in PlayStation All-Stars, whilst Kuro was resigned to gaming trivialists like these forevermore. Number 6. The PS2's towers weren't just related to your saves. Back in the internet's most formative years, the rumor mill turner was king. Any kid on the playground could mention the PS2's increasingly clogged up start screen was actually a virus, and you'd have no choice to believe him. Instead, a more prevalent theory was that it represented your save files, which was partly true, but in reality, the towers grew and multiplied based on the amount of titles you'd played, as well as for how long. Simple. Number 5. The meaning of the button symbols. Teya Goto, designer of the PlayStation controller itself, once mentioned in an interview that the legendary button symbols were not just randomly selected. Instead, triangle was intended to be used as a literal point of view, square could be a menu slash stat screen, and circle slash X were yes, no, respectively. This is why a number of Japanese games to this day still have circle as their OK button instead of the X, and why something like the original Metal Gear Solid had Snake's first-person toggle on the triangle button. Number 4. Sony lost over $3 billion on the PS3. Remember the sky-high price for the original PS3, the whopping $600 Sony thought people would actually pay? It was precisely down to the company going way over budget in R&D, thereby having to force the ridiculous price point as a means of at least attempting to recoup their losses. In the end, it couldn't hold up as people refused to fork out the hefty sum, leaving Sony to lose out on around $3.5 billion within the first couple of years on sale. It would take years to turn things around and actually gain a profit, but by then, financial analysts and consumers had already doomed the PS3 to third place behind both the Xbox 360 and the Wii. Number 4. The PS3's logo had the same font as Sam Raimi's Spider-Man movies. 
Thought the PS3's original font looked familiar? It's because the exact same typeface was first seen in 2002 when Spider-Man swung onto the silver screen. Designer of the machine, Teo Goto, reportedly wanted to use the font as Sony already had the license for Spidey, and he noted there were many similarities between the rounded nature of the font, the sensibilities of Spider-Man's character, and the new age look of the console itself. Later down the line, Sony switched to the more simplistic style seen across the slim models, with Ken Kutaragi stating that they wanted to set a new direction for the hardware. Number two, the PlayStation began as a partnership with Nintendo. Yes, as crazy as it is to think, Sony's original model was a cartridge-taking dual machine with Nintendo, supposedly providing all the storage power of discs with the fast-loading prowess of the cartridge. Sadly, the two business giants couldn't settle on how they'd actually split the profits when it came to retail, leading to Sony taking the then-named PlayStation, with the space in between it, and running with it, creating one of the longest-lasting rivalries in gaming history. Number one, the PS2's design actually came from a 1993 Atari model. Thought the PS2 had a certain retro charm? It was because, following the acquisition of Atari from Sony, the legendary company came with a number of different patents and concepts. One design Sony liked the look of was the original Falcon 030 Microbox, which they heavily borrowed for the PS2's form factor. It took off like nothing else, helping the PS2 become the best-selling console in gaming history to the tune of over 150 million units. So that's our list. How did you score? Let us know in the comments below how many you knew and if there are any other awesome facts I missed. You can find us on Facebook here. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I'm Scott from whatculture.com, and I'll see you soon.